or requests from female friends. And this, uh, is, this cycle, consisting of three songs, uh, is one of those. In the call phone or the introduction, he says, the greatest of my secret companions, Tseong, a Dakinia family from the town of Tridu, requested a prophecy. This was my response. We have a saying, you're better understood if you speak clearly. And by that I mean, I better explain the context of all this. Tenshin Bawe Dorje was uh, an extraordinary being by any standard. He was the rebirth of Nupchin Sunji Yeshe, who in the 8th and 9th centuries was one of the foremost among Guru Rinpoche's 25 main disciples. But that was not his only uh, significant previous life. We consider the forebearers of all of the four greater and eight lesser branches of the Kaju to be the lords Marpa, Milarapa, and Gampopa. Now, if we uh, look up the term Kaju in the um, classical Tibetan histories, such as the Blue Annals of the eminent scholar Gurlotsawa, or the uh, History of the Kaju by Apawa Tsulam Trengwa, we'll see that originally there are two branches of the Kaju. The one which was brought to Tibet by Lord Marpa, the translator, is collectively called the Marpa Kaju. The other, which was brought to Tibet by the uh, uh, learned Siddha uh, Chungpo the Yogin, is called the Shangpa Kaju. The, the four greater and eight lesser, or four main and eight secondary divisions of the Kaju are all divisions within the Marpa Kaju. So there uh, have always been two main branches of the Kaju, Marpa Kaju and Shangpa Kaju. The twelve, the four greater and eight lesser lineages are all branches of the Marpa Kaju. Eventually, the Marpa Kaju came to be held preeminently by Lord Gampopa, who was one of Jutsun Milarepa's two principal <coughs> disciples, who were his sun-like disciple, Lord Gampopa, and his moon-like disciple, Lord Richungpa. The four greater or four primary divisions of the Marpa Kaju were founded uh, by uh, four disciples of Lord Gampopa and the eight secondary divisions by eight disciples of one of those four. So they all come from Marpa and Gampopa. The four primary divisions include such as the Karma Kaju, which was founded by Lord <coughs> Chempa the first Jamal Karmapa, and the Param Kaju, which was founded by Lord Dharma Wongju, who was a direct disciple of Gampopa and also his personal attendant. Dharma Wongju, the founder of the Param Kaju, was one of the successive uh, rebirths of Nupchin Sanjay Yeshe, and therefore one of the previous lives of Techun Bawe Dorje. After that life, he took rebirth as the Dharma Lord Sunam Zongpo, who was the lineage holder of Chodrak Monastery, still a very important monastery in eastern Tibet. After that, he took rebirth in Sormong as the great holder of the Sormong Kaju as Shotse Chunerabje. And the <coughs> successive uh, relics and prophecies and uh, evidence of miraculous uh, deeds by these masters still exist. After successive lives as the uh, Shatse Rinpoche's of Somong, eventually, in 1836, he was born as Techen Bawe Now, I'm telling you all of this to give you a context for understanding the validity and blessing of Techen Bawe Dorje's teachings. Of course, we, now I come to the awkward fact that, according to His Holiness, the 16th John Kamaba, I am the rebirth of these great beings. This is a little bit like calling a dog a lion. I feel great devotion and respect for my predecessors, but I want to make it clear that under no circumstances do I claim or even think that I possess their qualities and their equal. Nevertheless, I'm in a, I'm in a tough place because once His Holiness said I am their rebirth, 
I can't say I'm not. <laughs> he has supercognition and I don't, so therefore I'm stuck with this name. <laughs> but I don't wish to claim that I possess any of their qualities. In any case, the successive lives of Tich and Bawe Dorje were all wonderful beings who embodied great blessing. And we need to understand that in approaching the context of this song, where in the introduction he says it was written in response to a request by the greatest of his secret companions. We might be a little suspicious about what all this means. If we look at the life of Tich and Bawe Dorje from a mundane point of view, he did appear to have a lot of girlfriends and occasionally um, to write songs for them. But in reality, his physical connection with them was not a standard or ordinary mundane one. It was a source of great benefit for them and for others. I mention all of this simply because when we listen to realization songs and the explanation of them, the attitude with which we hear them is very important. If we think, well, although these seem like songs written by someone for his girlfriend, <coughs> really, they are profound means of instruction that directly point out the nature of mind and also communicate the essence of all dharma. If we have that attitude, then hearing this will be of tremendous benefit. If we dismiss them out of hand, thinking, well, these are just fine words written by a guy to please his girlfriend, then we're not going to be open to the profound meaning of them. So, if you listen to them with an open mind, there is great blessing to be had. 